This is the Voice Over Marketing Podcast, episode number 57. Just like the ketchup. Uh, this just in to the WMEL News Desk. Expired after that you will be taken under custody by the local cops. Ooh. As there are four serious allegations pressed on your name at this moment. I wonder what they could be. We would request you to get back to us so that we can discuss about this case before taking any legal action against you. Scary. The number to reach us is 305. Yeah, let me write it down. 396. Thank you. Hey there, it's John. How are you? Thanks for spending some time with me today. I do appreciate it. You know, people have asked me, what are the themes of the Voice of a Marketing podcast? And I tell them primarily it's hire yourself. Use your voice talents, your production talents, if you have them, to create your own products and services that people want to buy from you. Become an expert in a niche. Create products in that niche. Sell them. Create assets. It doesn't have to be about voiceover. It can be about anything in your life. And today's guest, Joelle Jacob, has done just that. We have a great interview with her. I'm not going to go too far into it because... I'll explain it at the beginning of the interview. I think I hinted at it last episode. But before we dive in, we've got some pretty cool information. First of all, we have had 87,160 downloads of the various odd and sundry episodes of the Voice Over Marketing Podcast. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody who has recently joined the Voice Over Marketing Podcast group on Facebook. As of this recording, we have 1,470 members, and we have probably about 12 people joining the group every day. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I try and reach out to each of you as you sign in to uh, thank you for joining and let you know about new episodes and all of that. So I'm sorry I can't mention you by name, but uh, suffice to say, we've got a lot of great discussion taking place. We've had people share uh, articles about massive marketing mistakes. We've had people sending in their demos from South Africa. A lot of people just thanking me for joining Thanks for reaching out for the Voice Over Marketing Podcast group on Facebook. And we've got a lot of really, really cool things being posted up there. Of course, Mark Grau is a regular contributor, and he's got some pretty cool voiceover events that he's shared a, a trailer for for that and his demo production and all of that. So we've got some really cool things. And plus, he's got some great pictures. I mean, Jonathan Witters? How did you get to be so lucky? <laughs> he was appointment viewing. And if you don't know who Jonathan Winters is or was, man, you're missing out. Just Google that, and the man was insane. He was Robin Williams before Robin Williams was Robin Williams, to put it like that. So, let's get to my interview with Joel Jacob. And let me just say that what Joel has done is taken a lot of courage, and I think you are going to be touched by her story and the amount of effort and work that she's put into creating her book to make it available to help other people. So with that, let's go talk to Joelle. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the program. As I mentioned in the first part of the show, I told you my guest today was going to be none other than Joelle and Jacob. And Joelle is a voice talent. She's been a professional voiceover artist since 2009. She's also an actor, a singer, songwriter, musician, artisan, makeup artist, speaker, and author. And aside from all of that, Joelle is a big supporter of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. Uh, she's been a client of mine, and she made a very generous donation to the uh, VoiceOver Marketing Podcast several months ago. And she reached out to me, I think, a couple of months ago. Is that right, Joelle? Yeah, when I released it. Yep. Yeah. First of all, thanks for being on the program today. No, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. So she wrote this book, and she said, I think you told me about it a while ago, and I said, you know what, we have to have you on the show, because one of the things that I talk about all the time is creating our own products and services, hiring ourselves and using our talents to create things that people need and, cons and want to consume. And when you and I first started talking, we were talking about you putting together a book on makeup techniques, correct? Yeah, I was going to write a book about how to run the business of a makeup artist, not necessarily the technique, because I've been very successful at that for 30 years. And I think that there's a lot of things 
that makeup artists don't know about being on the set and how to work with everybody else in the crew. But uh, it just didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you kind of, well, you were very candid with me. You basically said, you know what? I, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> 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 and I said, fine, well, you know, life's too short. Let's move on to something we do want to work on. And you basically said, you know what, I'm going to work on this and I'm going to follow up with you. And you published this book called Happy, How to Manage Depression and Anxiety Without Big Pharma by Joelle and Jacob. And this is a very cool book. I love the cover of this book, Joelle. The big Thanks. yellow smiley face and the word happy right above it. We're going to have a link to this in the show notes for people to do it. But first of all, congratulations on getting this thing done. This is huge. Thank you. Yeah. You reached out after episode, I think it was 54 or 53. Three, I can't remember. A couple yeah. episodes back where I basically t told everybody, you know, I've been MIA for a few months because I've been in a funk and didn't really have a lot of creative juices and kind of needed to regroup and recharge. And you said, thanks for the episode. And I've, it's amazing to me. I, I hesitated on that episode so much before I put it out. And I think I talked about that in the episode afterward. Um, because I was like, oh my gosh, am I revealing too much? And the amount of feedback and comments I've received on that episode was really gratifying because I was, evidently I'm not alone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I think that's so important for all of us to be able to share. Yeah. You know, we're always trying to put our best foot forward and show this wonderful, happy, successful person all the time. And but we're all human. Right. And being able to connect in that way and realize that we're all in this together, you know, really helps us all be able to support each other. And there's a lot to be said for that. That's real community. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, especially, you know, and I think the VO community is great with that. You know, we're all so supportive of each other. And that's part of one of the reasons that I love it so much. Right. Yes, it's definitely a characteristic of a characteristic. Oh, easy for me to say uh, of the voiceover community, as you said, very supportive. I, I think there's also a double edged sword to that. And I'll, I'll mention that in a second. I think also sometimes we can be quick to criticize each other, too. Oh, sure. For certain things. I think particularly when it comes to money and making money and charging for things, it's an interesting dynamic to watch that in the various groups. And you actually talk about that. I want to touch upon it in your book. But um, I think, and I'll say this before we move too much into your book, I think being a creative person can be kind of a double-edged sword. Sometimes I go into, oh my gosh, what if this, what if this, what if this? And I think that's a byproduct of being a creative person because when I'm creating and I've got an imagination going and it's very positive in a good way, I can't be stopped. But then, like I said, on the other side of the coin, if you, you get that creative imagination going and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah our creative imaginations can go all over the place and you got to be careful where it leads you and that's why it's so important to find that balance and what's where each individual is going to find their balance and what tools and techniques they can use to, to find that it's important to to know that for yourself what do i need being conscious of that yeah yeah no, you find the same thing i guess huh? obviously absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're, with all the different things that you do, you're surrounded by creative people from one end of the day to the next. And I have to say, I admire your courage in coming up with this book and putting it out there for people because you, you're very candid about your upbringing, you know, uh, being moved around a lot as a kid and how that may have caused some stuff and manipulative uh, relationship early on in, in your mm -hmm. life. <laughs> you refer to him as a DB. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a G-rated <laughs> program, so we'll keep it there. But uh, it's an interesting story. And I think we've all dealt with people like this and in different parts of our life. But the thing is, is you figured it out and got away from it. And I've met uh, a wonderful husband. Is it Jerry? Jerry, yeah. Like I said earlier, we're multifaceted, and one of the themes of this podcast is going through your history, finding your story, finding what you have experience in, what you have knowledge in, and taking those experiences and creating products and services that people need. And I think a lot of people 
limit that to, oh, what do I know about voiceover? Or, you know, and I use this analogy all the time, and I'm not a butterfly collector, but if you were, if you had, were a butterfly collector as a hobby, you could create a whole program on butterfly collecting and create an audio program or a book or whatever, and you can sell that. And I think people think about it in hobbies, but you've actually looked at something, you know, a part of your life, something that you've worked on for yourself, and you've created something here. What prompted this? Why did you feel the need to create this? And do you think it relates back to your voiceover career in any way? And could you share us the story of this book? Well, I got a phone call from an old acquaintance friend. She taught me Reiki. She was a Reiki instructor. Okay. So we were friends, you know, acquaintances, not really close. And so kudos to her for cold calling me out of the blue and telling me about her coaching program, Tell Your Story, because we had a conversation and it just touched me. She said, I'm doing this program, helping people tell their stories and make a book out of it. And somehow that just totally scared me witless because I knew I was going, going to do it. Uh -huh. And I wasn't really even sure what my story was until I started writing. Okay. And I always wanted to be a writer. That's why I wanted to write. You know, I figured I would write the makeup book. But when I started writing, she just said, put everything, put everything down. And it was petrifying. You know, I'm putting out all these secrets, all of who I truly am, because that authenticity, that, that sort of stuff, everything that ended up in my book, I know was helping people. And sometimes it's that scariest stuff, just like in your episode... 53, 54, when you were being authentic and being vulnerable and sharing who you are as a real person and those sorts of things, in the end, those are the things that can really help people. So in the writing of it, I just kind of, you know, it was cathartic, you know, just putting out all this stuff and then the editing process of, okay, where's the nuts and bolts and how am I going to help people? And then daring in the end <laughs> to actually put it out there. Yeah. The process was kind of self, you know, healing for myself. Mm -hmm. And then actually putting it out there in March, that has been the most healing because now it's just out there and I have nothing to hide. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, don't ha I, I can't hide anymore and so I don't have to. So I can be so much more of my authentic self. Yeah. So it, it really came from this invitation from... Leslie to do what she wanted to do in helping other people. She helps other people do this, and it just kind of goes down the line, helping, helping, helping. So that's where it came from. Although I've always wanted to create my own products, you know, I've written songs and I finally released one after eight years having it in cold storage. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just out of that fear of letting another piece of me out there. And I think releasing this book has gave me the courage to release that song and. You know, and I'm so excited to write some more and release some more songs. You know, it's just really created this kind of opening and releasing thing of wanting to share more. That's great. I would be interested to ask you, the listener of the podcast, how many projects have you kind of started? And, and I'll raise my own hand, um, <laughs> you know, uh, that you've put in a closet somewhere or on the bookshelf and you just haven't done it and gotten it out there. I, you know, I bet there are a lot of folks. And what was the defining moment where you said, yeah, I'm going to put this out for the world to consume? I don't know if it was a specific point. I think it was during, it took me a year to go through this book process with Leslie and just all the work I was putting into it by last fall. I real, you know, it was slowly but surely, okay, I'm really putting this all together, putting all the pieces together. I'm not going to do this for nothing. Yeah. I'm going, I'm, and it took me another six months to really feel comfortable with releasing the book. But it's interesting how after I released the book, then I just had this feeling inside me, you got to let, you got to release that song. Okay. You know, so then I put that together and, and I'd been holding it for so long, you know, oh, it's not perfect. It's not great. Oh, it's what I'm talking about. Oh, blah, blah. All these things, all these emotional attachments I had to it and judgments. Mm -hmm. And then I just had this feeling, no, you know, we're, we're only here for a finite time and we have so many things to share. Why not share what I have to share? There you so go. now I releasing that song. And I think the thing is, is we all want to be liked. We all want to be accepted. And that's been a big story in my life. And 
coming to a place of not everybody has to like me. <laughs> not everybody has to resonate with what I have to share, but I know that some people will. Right. And some and some people are going to like what I do and that's great. And if I can help somebody with my book, if I can entertain somebody or make somebody feel better or resonate with them with my music and my songs and my lyrics and touch them in some way, then that's connection and there again that's that's the thing. We're all connected and that's what we want. It doesn't necessarily have to be acceptance and liking. It's positive connection in whatever way that we have to share it. So why not? Everybody, please share your stuff. That's what we're here for. <laughs> you know? Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what life is. Live it. Share it. We need your stuff. I think it's, oh gosh, I think it's Seth Godin who wrote the book Tribes. And he's, he mentioned something very similar. He says, you know, the world needs what you have. And not everybody needs it, but there's a group of people out there that can benefit from what it is that you want to share with the world. And, um, right. Yeah, so it's very cool. So kudos to you. Can we link to your song as well? Is that on iTunes or anything? Or It is on iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby. I don't think I shared that link with you. That's right. I'll, I can send that to you. Yeah, you can share those links, and we'll put them on there for everybody to listen to your stuff, and we'll put a link to this book, too. Now, do you own the, cop- you own the copyright on this book, right? You published this? Yep. Are you going to do an audio book version? Yeah, I did create an audio book, and I listened to it. Of course, I'm judging myself through it, but I am... <laughs> Yeah. Still releasing it. Good for you. W- warts and all. <laughs> I, as you're talking, I'm listening. I like your chapter, Everybody Poops. And <laughs> holy hallelujah, Batman. I, I I don't know who this is, but hey, kudos That's to... That's my husband. Oh! <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to ask, but uh, <laughs> you know, you're going to have to get the book to see what I'm talking about here. Uh, holy hallelujah, Batman. And there's no Batman here, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it has to do with the previous chapter, Everybody Poops. <laughs> oh, <that's nice. laughs> like I said, you, you have a lot of courage. <laughs> I want to talk to you about some of the different aspects of your book. You talk about uh, NDs, naturopathic doctors. Can mm-hmm. you talk to me about that a little bit, that experience? And because, you know, I'm interested in health and wellness, and I have that other website, thevoiceoverathlete.com. So I'm just curious as to how this all worked out for you, if you can share. Oh, yeah, sure. When I was going through a bout of anxiety and depression that had really gotten me, probably the lowest I had gotten, it was really bad. So I went to find somebody for talk therapy, and after a few sessions, she recommended a naturopath, ND. And I didn't know that naturopathic doctors existed. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited to go to her because I had tried pharmaceutical drugs before for my depression. And although it did work, I guess, enough to get me out of a bad situation, it just, I did not like the way it made me feel at all. So when I came into this bout, I didn't want to use pharmaceuticals. And so the naturopath has helped me with my anxiety and depression. She's helped me with stomach issues that I had my entire life, some hormonal stuff like my thyroid, all the stuff I'm just managing through natural herbs, products, whatever. I'm not on any pharmaceutical medications. So she's just a a lifesaver. Yeah. You know, she's, I just love her so much. (laughs) I can't say enough about, you know, a naturopath. Yeah. And I love that idea. And I'm looking at chapter 13, food and mood. And, you Mm -hmm. know, so between the natural herbs and stuff, it's all about what you're putting inside your body as well. Um, Yeah. And it's, and everybody figuring out for themselves what that means. And so you can be conscious of your own life, what you're doing, pay attention to how things may affect you. You could eat something one day and it, it affects you 48 hours later. And, you know, my naturopath really helped me figure out stuff that I was allergic to, stuff that I should stay away from. And I've, you know, paid attention myself. Mm -hmm. How do I feel being conscious, not just living through life and eating all sorts of stuff because it's easy. Right. I mean, whole foods are easy, too. Just we just we've been fed through the media and Uh, life, you know, like how easy it is to put a pop tart and, you know, right. (laughs) Like, yeah, no good. You don't even have. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. The processed foods versus 
eating an apple right. or peel the wrapper off a banana. And right. <laughs> you know, I couldn't agree more. I want to ask you a question. Have you, just a reset for our listeners, people might be thinking, well, what's this got to do with voiceover marketing? And it's got everything to do with voiceover because if we're not healthy, our voice isn't healthy. And if we can't work because we're ill, then all of this marketing stuff is for nothing. And we basically are the product because, and how much better could our voices be if we took care of ourselves, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually and mentally. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have Joelle and her book on here today. Have you read the book, The Deflame Diet? No, it's, no. It's really, been my list. I think because of, I be, because you mentioned it. Oh, okay. My, yeah. My trainer, Is it an audio book? Because I don't read because I read so much doing audio books. Right. <laughs> that I, I listen. I, I don't know if he does have an audio book. I should find that out. And if not, I'll offer to do it for him. <laughs> you may have to be, yeah, you yeah. may have to narrate it. Um, <laughs> it's, it can be a little heady. I don't know if some of it would translate well to an audio book because it's got some interesting diagrams in there, but uh, mm -hmm. it's all about the importance of, like you said, eating whole foods, not necessarily the grocery store chain, but you know, natural, unprocessed foods and staying away from certain grains and processed grains and, and sugar. Right. And sugar products. Um, I remember a personal story just before I continue, and you mentioned something about how food can affect you. And I was always the kid doing the voices and the imitations and all of that. And when I was a kid, my family would go on vacation up to Maine. It was like a two-week vacation. And we would stop off at a burger joint that people would be familiar with. And my dad would go in and it was like one time, it was like the one time per year we got to eat at that place. And my mom was a dietitian by profession. So we'd go in my dad would get like the burgers, fries, and, and the drinks, and we'd head up to Maine, and from Boston, it's about a two-hour-plus drive. I would be in the car and jabbering away, and my father would be like, John, stop. And I'm, okay. And I'd be back again. Ba 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 ba. Oh, my God. Stop. Stop. My mom starts to think about it, and she's like, there's caffeine in that Coke. So, from then on, there are two things that happened. Whenever we stopped off at this place on our way to vacation, because, you know, it was like we just packed the car up. Mom didn't pack a lunch, too. You know, it was enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure my mom ever really got a, a vacation. Because, right. Um, but at any rate, <laughs> we go up there, and my dad would go in, get the sodas, and accept I got the orange drink. Yeah. <laughs> The uncarbonated bug juice, you know? And Dang. It, it, yeah, pretty much. And it made all the difference. My mom was like, that's it. So the joke became in the family that if I was kind of in my zone, and if you hang out with me for any length of time, people experience that for, you know, pretty quickly. My mom, the joke in the family would be, have you had Coke? <laughs> have, have you had Coke? Because <laughs> it would take hours for that to get out of your system, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Caffeine and sugar. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. So food and mood. Another thing that leapt out to me was chapter four, moving meditation and mindfulness. And I think this ties into what you had said before about what everybody, you want everybody to like you and all that kind of stuff. You talk about all of the sensory input that we get these days. You know, you've, uh, I'm going to quote here. When I found myself in jobs that had me surrounded by people and noise, the consequences of not finding balance in this realm were palpable. I'd get physically sick or, uh, you know, other, your, your depression and anxiety would exacerbate. I, I find for myself sometimes I just take in too much information, you know, between producing commercials all day, having a, a monitor on in the background to just kind of follow what's going on in the world various social media things, and, you know, I'll listen to podcasts. I find when I get in my car at the end of the day, I just, I got to have quiet. How much do you think today's, this may sound like a self-serving question, but I'd like to get your opinion on it. How much do you think today's connectedness, if you will, plays out or affects people and that we might not be aware of? I think it's really important for there to, again, there has to be balance. 
it's really about finding, I think it's well known that there is addictive types of personalities or addictions to, say, even social media yeah. or just the TV or having noise on or, and you know, it can go the other way. People getting, turning into recluse, yeah. being reclusive. So where is that balance? I know for me, being a freelancer, not just with voiceover, and I, that is where you, you know, I think maybe that's true for voiceover. I just know for makeup artistry, that's like you answer the phone call, you check the email, you, you're you connected to that phone all the time because that's where your work's coming from. So how do you find that balance of <laughs> just being in the world, taking a breath and separating yourself sometimes from technology and the rest of the world and what what the rest of the world may feel like is demanding from you. So mm. that's where, you know, that mindfulness and meditation or trying to live more mindfully, just being in the moment, even if you are, say, on Facebook or whatever you're doing, if you can be mindful in it and not get sucked into it, where it's just taking you over instead of you utilizing it in a healthy way. So I think that's where a lot of that balance is important. Mm -hmm. But I know for me... I need a lot of quiet yeah. in, in my life in general. You know, it took me a long time to, I probably al always knew that, but didn't give myself that space. And now I do, because if I don't, then I'm just, I'm overwhelmed I, yeah. and I'm not doing anything right. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. Or you're not feeling like you are. You probably just, you couldn't not be able to give it a hundred percent. I grew up, I'm the oldest of five. And I love my family dearly. I love their all my in-laws, you know, my sibling spouses, et cetera, and their kids and everything like that. But it's just Dan and me. And I didn't realize I'm, I'm kind of similar. I mean, I spend my life in a lot of noise just because of what I do. But at the same time, I need the downtime and the quiet. And sometimes I'll get to these family outings and it's like, I love it. But then there's times where I, I just need to go for a walk or take a drive or go exercise or what have you, just some time for myself. Is that what you mean by taking time to care for yourself? Yeah, I think everybody needs to figure out what it is to take care of themselves because we can get sucked into, the, into life too much, especially as freelancers or somebody who's waiting for that other call to come in and we have these deadlines and so much of our work demanding from us. And if we work from home all the time, you know, we'll work all the time. I find myself doing that myself. You know, I will work all the time and I'm like, okay, stop, go take the dogs for a walk, go play tennis, go to the beach today. You deserve a day off because the client's, Often, they don't give you a weekend. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all right, let's have these pickups uh, by Monday. Well, that means I have to do it over the weekend. And what is a weekend? I joke with myself that way, but so I'll take Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday and Thursday is my weekend. <laughs> or, you know, it, you, we, it's really important that we give ourselves that time and take care of yourself for, for whatever that is for you. Yep. You know, every, everybody's different, but paying attention to that. And, it, and again, it just comes back to balance for sure. And some people, you know, I'm an intro, I'm more introverted, but I do have a lot of ex, you know, I'm extroverted too. I'm kind of probably right in the middle, but I do get sensory overload. Yep. So an extrovert, what's going to fulfill them may be going out and socializing. Like that's how they're going to get, because they've been in a booth all day right. by themselves. So, you know, what is that for yourself? Do it. Just give yourself, give yourself permission and do those sorts of things. And, you know, we write about and we speak about and we talk about and we teach what we need to learn ourselves or we have learned and we're working on ourselves. So that's, that's something I always am working on, giving myself permission to take it easy or give myself time or give myself a day and just try to go have fun. Even if that's just me sitting at my craft desk doing something that isn't going to wind up being anything, but I'm having fun playing with colors. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great. Two points on that I wanted to just, uh, I wanted to ask you a question, but I also wanted to point out in case people don't know, I'm, I'm an introvert as well. And people always go, really? How is that? And I said, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm here in a booth all day. I'm not up on a stage talking in front of 500 people. I've done that and I, mm -hmm. I, I'm happy to do that. But it's all about in how you recharge and restore yourself. If you're an introvert, you're more likely to recharge yourself and go share the moment with a couple of good friends in a quiet space. Whereas, like I think you said, if you're an extrovert, you're going to recharge yourself by going out and celebrating, having a big party and dancing and all that kind of stuff. Am I wrong mm -hmm. with that? 
Well, I think it's different for everybody. Yeah. I mean, really, it's about how are you recharging yourself and recharging yourself from what? Yeah, that makes sense. The other question I wanted to ask you is, uh, you know, giving yourself permission uh, to take a break from the work. I know myself, I'm a lot better at doing that now than I used to be. Some of that was forced by health issues. You know, I, I, I've talked candidly about being really, really busy and making tons of money, but then I wound up with kidney stones and in an ambulance uh, and stuff like that. You know, you pay a cost and all that. So I'm less hesitant to say, hey, you know what? I need a break. I need to stop. But I do remember before I got to that point that there was some sort of, you know, you kind of throw guilt on yourself like, geez, I really should be working on this and getting this done. Have you ever dealt with that? And how did you, if you did, how did you overcome it? Or how do you deal with that? Because I'm sure we're not alone. I'm sure we have people listening today that feel like they should, oh, my God, I've got to build this business all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, and I still, you know, that's something that I work on, for Mm -hmm. sure, because I'm always, okay, what's the next thing? What am I going to write next? (laughs) You know, I already have it planned that I'm going to go lay down some vocals for my next songs that I'll be releasing. And always, I can be very much a future thinker. Mm-hmm. and worry about the future. But that's where it comes back to that mindfulness and trying to be in the moment and doing one thing at a time. So, yeah, I can definitely get into the go, 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 always have to do something. Why am I not? And then I can get start judging myself and yeah. beating myself up. And you know what? <laughs> There's enough other people that will be happy to do that. So, I, you know, it's about caring enough for, about yourself, loving yourself, accepting yourself, warts and all, and giving yourself a break. You yeah. know, not going because I can definitely go to the perfectionism. Yeah. And I've worked a long time not to do that. So I do release things imperfect almost on purpose. So that oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, nope, I'm going to let it go. I can hear that little lip smack. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if they don't send it back in pooping, then it's okay. And, you know, I still get hired. And That's funny. Because you can spend so much time trying to perfect things and nobody's perfect. So giving yourself a break. I think since I've been practicing mindfulness mm-hmm. and meditating in the ways that I do has helped me so much to get my heart rate down has really helped me be a calmer person mm-hmm. and be able to recover from emotional jolt more quickly, even anger or frustration or fear, and being able to approach work and deadlines and projects and when people come at you offering you certain work and being able to say no and just not being an anxious jumble of nerves always looking for the next thing of survival as freelancers we can be like that sometimes so more of an abundance versus a scarcity mindset yep i like that i want to thank you for your time we're getting close to an hour here i have one one more question before we you know, we tell folks where they can learn more about you and your, your products. You mentioned something about self-esteem. Don't believe everything you think, I think is the chapter. Yeah. Self-esteem mm-hmm. and money. And a lot of the discussions in the voiceover groups, et cetera, is all about how can I make more money? And there's a lot of, I'd say, bad energy about pricing and how, you know, how much people are paying for this, that, and the other thing, or how do I set my rates and how can I feel comfortable about setting the rates that I want to get. Can you speak to that? I do know what you're talking about. The I try not to engage too much in that. It just seems like there's so much anger and fear involved in a lot of those conversations. Although at the same time, I have to say, I understand some of it. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not valid. I'm just... uh... Yeah. No, even in the... So my husband brought this up today. You know, in the makeup artistry business for years, crew makes a certain amount in this area for a 10-hour day. And then a bunch of people that They haven't been in production for their whole lives. Knowing what the going rate is will hang a shingle, and that's fine. You can do that. And they'll go and do a 10-hour day for 20% of what they could be making because that's the going rate. And I think it's about not knowing. When I started off in voiceover, I was doing work for much lower than I should have been because I didn't know. Right. (laughs) And as soon as I found out, then I was like, wait a minute. 
I'm not going to do this anymore. And I think that's where a lot of that conversation in the voiceover community is as well. But there is all sorts of work out there. I mean, most of my work is in audiobooks. So, yeah. you know, isn't that one of the lowest paying out of all? <laughs> but I love it because... For me, it's so much acting. I guess let me rephrase the question, and, and yeah. you've been with, very generous with your time. If you were to speak to someone who felt uncomfortable charging what they were worth, and it just was like, oh, I don't know if I should really charge this much, or I don't know if I'm worth that much, or something like that, what would you say to that person to help them get over that hump? Well, first of all, I think what I always try to do is ask what the budget is. You know, I've gotten paid... <laughs> Thousands of dollars for something that I'm like, what? Because I asked what the budget was. Right. And I didn't expect that. And if somebody wants to give you something, then give the gift of receiving. Okay. <laughs> if they want to give you a compliment, if they want to pay, you know, so we had Uncle Stanley. Uncle Stanley would always want to pay for all the dinners. He would never accept anybody else paying for dinner. And it used to make my husband crazy. He's like, why doesn't he let us pay sometimes? And I'm like, it just makes him feel good. Give the gift of receiving. And I spent years just trying to be able to accept a compliment. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. just say thank you. Don't turn it into a, oh, this old thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, somebody <laughs> wants to give you thousands of dollars for something for doing some voiceover work. Yeah. Smile really big. Yeah. <laughs> say thank you. And know that you are worth it. We are worth it. And what we do is important. And when I think about what clients have, and I, I've seen budgets. You know, when I think about when I work on a commercial or even a corporate video, what that camera guy is getting paid. I know what he's getting paid. I know what the camera rental is going for. I know what the lighting rentals are going for. I know what that gaffer is getting paid for, the grip, the makeup artist, the PA, that location area. When you think about all the money that went into that, 20, 30 grand, your voiceover should be getting a good piece of that as well. Because that's, that's going to be part of the final product, as everything right. else is, too. Right, yeah. and that's huge. I mean, to me, I don't think it's... Sometimes, yeah, I understand some things are just graphics, and there's some pictures, and that's just a simple something that's going to be on a web and for a mom and pop, and you want to make the client happy, and you can feel good about that, but... There's a lot of money in production, and voiceover shouldn't be the least. You should definitely be getting paid more than the PA. <laughs> yeah, it's not an afterthought, or it shouldn't right. be. Right, right. Uh, and I think there are jobs out there where people are voicing for less than the PA yeah. on those jobs. So that's something to consider. Well, Joelle, I want to thank you so much. I mean, you've given us almost an hour of your time, and I really appreciate that. And thank you for sending me this book with the nice note in it and for the courage that you have to have put this book out. I mean, you do. You, you basically share you, which takes a lot of courage. So I want to honor that. Um, well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you. Yeah. And the title of the book is Happy, How to Manage Depression and Anxiety Without Big Pharma. And it was written by Joelle and Jacob, a voice actress and very talented person in many other respects, as I said at the beginning of the episode. So, Joelle, if people want to learn more about your services or if they want to reach out for something that may have touched them during our conversation today, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you and the book and your music? Well, you can go to my website, joellejacob.com. You know, you can subscribe there to my newsletter that I hardly ever do, so you'll hardly ever get any emails from me. But <laughs> if I do if I do have something to release or share, then then you could find out that way. But my website definitely has all sorts of things that I got going on and but yeah. subscribing to the, the diversified artist L L C newsletter or whatever it will turn out to be. Yeah, will be the way to find out things in the future for sure. And just make sure everybody, uh, Joel is J O E L L. Yes, yes. Jacob, no S. Yeah, J A C O B. Correct. Uh, no S. Okay, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and the book's available on Amazon? Amazon, Kindle, and soon Audible. 
Very good. And I've got the hard copy right here, and it's definitely worth picking up. And, it, and you know, folks, if you want to see what I'm talking about on that picture of her husband on Chapter 18, you've got to pick up the book. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Kindle, the Kindle version has it, too. So. Oh, even better. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but you've got some great quotes in here uh, from, you know, folks like Wayne Dyer and, and other, you know, just it's really it's very well put together. It's got some fun graphics in here. Thanks. Yeah. No, I, congratulations. So and I'll put uh, links to everything that you've given me on the show notes for this episode, if that's OK with you. That's great. Thank you so much. It's oh. been great being here. Thank you. Our program originates in the Boston studios. We hope you'll join us again. Until then. We bid you au revoir, keep your chin up, and the best of luck. Well, that's it for this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com so you'll get notices of new episodes, and please share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover world. Also, it would be a huge help if you'd like this podcast and rate it on iTunes to help keep it near the top of the list. Feel free to share your comments and questions about this episode and future topics you'd like discussed at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. And if you'd like more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching where we focus on growing your business, feel free to drop me a line at my cyber assistance email address at mike at johnmelly.com. Thanks for listening. Now go out there and share your voice with the world.